I look at breeders versus genomics specialists as key collaborators or partners in the effort to improve genomic selection in breeding. So I think breeders are leading the way, but they're and their knowledge of phenotypic information and their understanding of the genomics as the tools become, as the tools improve, are, are key points that have to come together. So not all breeders have both of those pieces. So institutions that have the specialists to bring those aspects together have to work together with breeders to make those improvements. I believe that investing in equipment, either collectively or in individual locations like CGIAR, depending upon the capabilities uh, at, at, in that breeding program, and this is going to be species specific, that investing in the equipment is key to being able to leverage the dropping of costs. People worry about these instruments being obsolesce the minute they get installed, but the truth is we've maintained compatibility with the instruments and made improvements on the side of the reagents. So to get the lowest cost and make the biggest improvements implementing genomic tools, I think access to the, that equipment is going to be key and making it local is really important for empowering the breeders that are, are working in any particular germplasm. So my suggestion would be centralized locations that invest in that equipment and make it accessible to, to a broad range of researchers um, in order to, to constantly leverage lowering in price of, of, of the advances in genomic technology. Once that equipment is installed and available and accessible, uh, the, the implementation of already available tools uh, will be much easier and cheaper. And the advances that, that, that these cutting edge agricultural scientists are making all the time will then be easier to implement on a local, local level. So when I hear the question about how to uh, distribute the hundred dollars between conventional breeding and genomics, I hear a question about how much do we invest in phenotypic information that has been part of the conventional breeding program versus investing in new methods of accelerating breeding through genomic tools. My concern with the question is that it assumes that we have to compete for a budget between phenotyping and genotyping, which is a concern to me because phenotype, without great phenotypic data, you cannot make huge advances quickly in breeding programs. That's, that's my opinion. You need to have a a foundation of phenotypic data, and maybe over time as you learn more about the genomics, you can lower the costs of your phenotyping um, programs. But, but you can't pit these two against each other, or, or the phenotyping may be overshadowed by the excitement of the new technology, and I think that's a risk. The question about how long do we need to wait for, for us to see a result from our implementation of accelerating breeding with genomic selection, I am seeing results now. And maybe I'm naive because I'm seeing it from the viewpoint of someone who, who wants to believe that the, the tools are, are, are the advances are happening quickly because I'm not a farmer, I'm not in the field. But I do talk to big seed companies quite a bit. And those seed companies have amazing programs. They're really pushing the boundaries of what can be done with genomic selection. And so I really believe that those, um, their results are already being planted into the ground now. And so I, my answer would be less than five years. I think we're already seeing improvements.